Hello everyone, my name is Totes and welcome to In A Nutshell, a series where we vaguely go over games in a semi-comedic fashion. Today we're playing Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, a fantastic farewell to our friend Nate and the series as we know it. Will Drake seemingly learn his lesson and stop his heisting lifestyle while he's ahead, or will he die in the series finale? Let's find out! Our journey quickly starts with Nate and our brother Sam being chased while boating out in the middle of the ocean. We get rammed by a boat that's randomly on fire, and we're dead. Thank you, game, for giving me one of the quickest fake deaths I'll ever get in this series. We then get brought into a flashback, learning a bit about Nate's backstory. He spent most of his time growing up without his family in an orphanage, and I'd have to imagine this is how and when he became such a quick-witted little sh**. Our brother comes to help sneak us out to escape our miserable lifestyle, and we also learn how to use a grappling hook at a young age. We then enter another flashback where Nate is making some good friends here in a Panamanian jail. Turns out we purposely got ourselves in this jail to try and find a pirate legend Henry Avery's cross. What's supposed to be inside this cross? A map to find one of the biggest undiscovered treasure heists in the history of the world. So we find the cross, turns out it's a fake, we escape the prison, but not before Sam dies, and I'm really starting to realize why Nate tells Elena in the first game. Obviously haven't been in a Panamanian jail. If in years later. And all the events of the previous three games have now transpired. Nate is living a simple life, now helping a cargo company in- OH SH- they put Crash Bandicoot in the game? What is this Easter egg? So Nate's working for a cargo company when- Wait a minute, Sam's alive? Although if you watched my previous video on Uncharted The Lost Legacy, you technically know that already. Sam ignores the whole, sorry for thinking I was dead the last 15 years, tension in the room, and wants us to continue to find the cross we needed. We end up going to a super wealthy party where I'd imagine most of these people are wearing monocles and sniffing their own farts. We end up stealing the cross, but not before running into and promptly getting our asses kicked by Nadine Ross, who really packs a punch. We escape the party after doing some good old fashioned killing, seek Avery's grave, find nothing, run into our bad guys here, and they're about to take our cross when they set off a booby trap, and you know the deal by now. We narrowly escape, and in some elaborate conversation, we get the idea of where we're heading next. And where are we heading, you may ask? To mother Madagascar! We get to drive a rental jeep in a somewhat open world area. We do some killing by some old brittle buildings, do some killing in some old cathedral type place, and then completely scale some old school clock before completely destroying it, just like we normally do. From here, the creators of the game really wanted us to do some good old puzzles that weren't too hard, but also show off these sick new Sony smartphones. Can you say product placement? After escaping in a convoy with our nice rental. We're a bit stuck on where to go. We decide to call it a night when... Hey, Elena, how's it going? Okay, so let's pause. <gasps> Nate did a no-no and lied to Elena, saying how he was doing some deep-sea diving thing with the companies employed with in Malaysia. Not that he was searching for some long-lost treasure heist with his long-lost that he was dead brother Sam, whom Elena never met because Nate never somehow brought up in their relationship slash marriage because Nate is a schmuck and never had five minutes to sit her down and say, yeah, my brother died trying to escape a pandemic in jail with me because our lifestyle is really dangerous and now some drug cartel guy broke Sam out and is going to get Sam killed if we don't give him a cut of Avery's treasure and you're caught up. Confrontation between Nate and Elena aside, we go to some beautiful tropical island to get our next clue. After doing our typical scaling and parkouring, we get to a puzzle. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate puzzles? Oh no. And after completing said puzzle, some statue comes out of the ground pointing us in the direction to go to the lost city of Libertaria. Nate decides to try and take the short way down. That's a long way down. <gasps> But through the power of video editing, instead of going the normal way, we're just gonna cut to where we need to be. There's definitely some trouble in paradise as a big storm starts coming in. We get back on our boat and now get to where the beginning of the game was taking us. Once discovering the city of Libertaria, we run into our bad guys again. Everyone, meet Rafe. Rafe, meet everyone. He's our main bad guy of this game. He's a little spoiled bully in school that always got his way and was raised into filthy riches. And for the sake of the story, we don't like him. We come to find out that Sam's story of the whole drug cartel guy breaking him out was a lie, and that it was Rafe that bought Sam's way out of jail. Well, 
Nate feels pretty sad, so he's gonna go fall off a cliff now, smack his chin on a ledge, and fall unconscious into the water below. We come to and realize that Elena has saved us. She's kinda gotten over the whole really big lie we told her, and she's here to help us find the treasure now. We find a pirate table party similar to that of the Goonies, which I think has to be my third or fourth reference to that movie in this series. After a lot of killing, and the most difficult chapter in Uncharted history if you're playing on crushing or brutal mode, We finally reconnect with our buddy Sully and Sam again. We instantly make up with Sam after his big lie, and just as we all agree to leave the treasure and escape with our lives intact, Sam decides, you know what, I still really want that treasure. And the group's like, oh no, please Sam, don't do it. Sam is selfish and decides to leave, and Nate's all like, well I gotta go save him because he's definitely gonna need saving. We find Sam who, ding ding ding, does in fact need saving. We find Avery's ship stuck in a cave with no escape, and have our final showdown with main baddie Wraith. The two of us decide to be civil, and decide the perfect way to see who gets to keep all this pirate treasure is to duke it out with some good old fashioned sword play. I hope my sword holds up. Oh. Nate always thought that Wraith's ego weighed him down, and you know what else will weigh him down as well? About two tons worth of treasure hoisted above him. See you later, Wraith. Hey -o. Well hey now, don't touch that dial, we still got some game to play here. The ship was on fire the whole time, so Nate comes up with a genius plan to get him and Sam out. By blowing a hole in the ship? Okay, well, you're the expert here, bud. As we leave the area the cave the ship was in starts to crumble apart, and we discover an opening that we narrowly escape out of. Son of a We may as well call this game Uncharted One-Eyed Willy's Treasure or something. Did no one proofread this and see the similarities with the Goonies? As our story wraps up, we get a nice send-off for Sully and Sam, who by the sounds of it, become eventual partners in crime. Nate buys the docking company with the help of Elena, who had some treasure in her pocket. They officially end their thieving lives and become legal treasure hunters. And we get a nice epilogue, sending the series off with Nate and Elena's daughter, finding all her parents' treasures from the series, while also leaving the chances of a reboot completely wide open to be able to play their daughter sometime in the future. The series concluded and no ancient civilizations destroyed in the process in this game. Nate and his family can ride off into the sunset, having some of the most epic stories to ever share. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you watched until the end and enjoyed yourself, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more awesome reviews of games in a nutshell, as well as ringing the bell to be notified when new episodes go live and to watch me play the games for the series during my live streams. I have an awesome server to hang out in as well with the link in the description. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you in the next episode of In a Nutshell. Is that it? You asked for it.